Hey guys, welcome to Route 66 Travel. If you want to know more about Route 66, you've come to the right place. My guest for today is Mary Billington, and she is the director of the Baxter Springs Museum in Baxter Springs, Kansas. Great to have you, Mary. Well, thank you. I'm thoroughly enjoying our conversation up till now, so I'm really looking forward to everything that we're about to get into. It's absolutely going to be fun. So I'm going to jump right in and ask you a really big question. How did Route 66 come to be? Well, that's a multi-layered question. In the beginning of car travel, we had the dirt roads that were used by the horses and the wagons. Then as that evolved, we had brick streets. The dirt evolved to hard gravel, and then that evolved to an asphalt and concrete system. This need for better and better roads is the evolution. And we started out with these wonderful trails, like here we had Jefferson Highway, we had the Ozark Trail System. Business owners and sponsors paid for these trails to be maintained. The U.S. government decided that they wanted to have more than. Our modern highway system actually came in to be in the 1910s to 1920s, they started moving from a trail system into a state system. By 1925, there was a call for a numbered roadway system because we had just these trails with names on it. Jefferson Highway goes from New Orleans to Manitoba in Canada. It had two editions in the Route 66 area that we're in right now, one that came through Baxter and went to Pittsburgh and one that diverted at Riverton and went to Joplin. And then from Joplin, it went to Kansas City, which is the one from Pittsburgh also went to Kansas City. Why did we need two trails? So by 1925, they discovered that they really couldn't just have these named trails out there. They sat down and they started a commission and the commission said, okay, east-west roads are going to end with an even number, north-south roads are going to end with an odd number. And they started platting out the United States. And that is how the modern highway system came to be. There's so many incredible things to explore. I have traveled Route 66 from about the Midwest, not all the way, but I've driven it probably 50 times from Missouri, Kansas area to California. Such a great memory for me. And I know that's the case for a lot of people. Can you tell me a little bit about what it means to you, Route 66 in general? For me, I grew up on Route 66, having been born in Tulsa and grew up in Northeast Oklahoma, Route 66 was a part of everyday life. But the big thing, the big thing for me, what it means was it means family because it was how we connected to go from one family member to another. My mother grew up just outside of Vanita. My dad grew up in Miami. His parents grew up in Seneca, Missouri, which is just south of Joplin. Going to see these grandparents and all these extended family members and the big celebrations for the holidays meant traveling Route 66. So for me, it means family. You have that connection of time and place. You know, your memories are all intertwined with all this love you have for the celebration and the family members and, and the memories of, oh, this is iconic. We get to go here today. This is way cool. We would go through foil and we would see the totem poles. And that was such a big, cool thing. And my dad we would stop occasionally, but most of the time he would at least drive through the park and we would see the totem poles at Foil. Then getting closer to Vanita and where she lived, it was always this, you recognize, oh, there's that. We know we're almost to grandma's. It just really, that sense of family and travel, how the anticipation works. How do you feel that affected you? And at what age do you think that you really recognize the value and the history in Route 66? To be honest, I did not tie Route 66 to that memory so much until later in my adult years. This iconic road has a history. This iconic road has a life of its own. And to be a part of that growing up, then it really started clicking. And then I, st I acquired this job almost eight years ago. And I was asked to help here and help there because of tourism. And I really was able to see it was a whole movement and it was a whole industry. So that kind of changed how I see Route 66. Was it when you came to the museum or was it before that? Well, Pixar lovingly released cars. 
when my daughter was still in school. It was really fun to see how that connotated over to where I lived because I was living in Galena at the time. And Galena is a huge part of the iconography that is in cars. You know, we've got several people in the area that are depicted in it, several locations that are depicted in it. My daughter was like, this is cool. This is all about where we live. And I think that resonated with a lot of people, not just us locally. So I did see that connection when cars came out. Now I'm on several groups that help market and promote Route 66 locally. We're, you know, researching different oral histories on Route 66 because these things are slipping away, which has become very important to me to follow through with that. Route 66 has been called the Main Street of America. Can you tell us maybe why that happened? Cyrus Avery, who's considered the father of Route 66, Tulsa businessman, he was part of the commission appointed to assign the layout of these roads. He wanted 60. He liked the round number of 60. Well, Kentucky didn't like that. The delegates from Kentucky said, no, we've got 60 already. We need to do this. Back and forth, back and forth. And someone suggested 66 hadn't been applied. Cyrus Avery liked that. At that point in time, it was to go from Chicago to Springfield. And at Springfield, it was supposed to turn west originally and go through the Rockies to California. Avery suggested, how about we drop it south so we don't have to go through the Rockies? And it came south and then across Texas, New Mexico, the route that it takes now. The concept was let's connect existing towns with ex in their existing roads. So the route was plotted from this town to this town to this town, hitting everybody's main street. So since it was hitting all these main streets on these on this route, it became the Main Street of America. Where was the birthplace of Route 66? So all of these lovely men, and they were all businessmen, delegates that were appointed by the government to go in and plat these all out, they were meeting in Springfield. And on April 30th, 1926, a telegram was sent to Washington, D.C., saying that the delegates had approved using 66 as the number for this east-west route from Chicago to L.A. that was sent to D.C. from Springfield. April 30th is a great day. It's the day my mom was born, so I can always remember what day that was. But it was the birthplace, that moment that 66 was put on paper and sent to D.C. and acknowledged in D.C. Now, it wasn't until November 11th in 26 that all of the platted routes, all of the numbers were approved by Congress. That's where the inception for a lot of people that that's the birthday for Route 66 is November 11th, 1926. But for me personally and for the citizens of Springfield, they all consider the April 30th date because that was the first time it was put on paper and officially said this is 66. So it's called Main Street of America. Is mm -hmm. it called, does it have any other nicknames? Oh, it's got plenty. The Will Rogers Highway is one. The Will Rogers, he died, I do believe, 36. But he was very famous, a Cherokee native of Oklahoma. He, you know, vaudeville and acting and everything. His nickname was Oklahoma's favorite son. You will find markers up and down the route say, saying that this is a portion of the Will Rogers Highway, which is Route 66. And then during the Dust Bowl, you had thousands of migrant workers moving from the Ozarks, Oklahoma and Texas and going into California. And John Steinbeck wrote The Grapes of Wrath. And in that, he refers it to the Mother Road. So that's a very common name that you will also see identifying Route 66. And it's the first time it's called the Mother Road. You know, John Steinbeck gave that moniker to Route 66. All of these things, I find they're all about time and place and community. The Mother Road, I mean, what does that imply? It, it implies that you're going home. Main Street of America, what does that imply? That everybody has a Main Street and that's the heart of the town. These nicknames are iconic and they all resonate with so many people. So it's fun to remember them and talk about them. It is. I love learning, which is the main reason why I love to have you on here. One of the things that I noticed is how the signs are different sometimes. Can you share why there are different? The numbers are different and the signs are a little different. Can you tell me why? Well, the main thing that changed was the font styling. There's like four different periods in time with the 
federal highway system that they changed those signages. This style wore out and different director got into place and, you know, they changed the sign. But there are actually four different styles of signage out there for that. The first ones were kind of boxy like this one. And then they smoothed out and they were more rounded, softer. The backgrounds changed from a white background, a single sign with a white background, to a square sign with a black background with a shield on the front of it. They did evolve. This one is considered pretty iconic. You will see all of them, you know, white shield, black letters, and it, the font will change depending on who the marketer is on the tourism pieces of signage. But they're pretty cool. They are. When I was young, it was a highlight for me to travel back and forth from the Midwest to California. You mentioned it being the mother road or something to take people home. And that's really what it was for us. It was my mom getting to go home to her mom and the rest of our family. So we had a kennel. We sold dogs. So we would take a couple of litters and we would travel with the dogs. We would sell them in California and pay for our trip and get to stay. And we would do all the fun things. But it became such a great memory for me and my sister. And we stopped at a lot of fun places. We stopped at this place called Two Guns. And back in the day, it was still in pretty good shape. At one time, it was a, an RV park. It was a wild animal that was local to the area. They had cages that were made out of rocks. And it was just so fascinating. So we always stopped there. And I took my kids and we would all stop there and we found out there's actually a cave there but more on the next episode it was really exciting to get to do that and to share it with my kids and they've gotten the habit of doing that why is it so iconic why is it something that people just can't get enough of why is it coming back so strongly right now that it's just a little combination of memories of yesterday and travels and family and dreams of creating those same memories again or similar ones with their existing family now. What you grew up doing just out on the road and seeing these places that you saw as a kid. So it's this combination of memories and hopes for the future and all rolled up into one big glorious package that is 66. People really, they really hunger for that need of memory and that need of hope and that dream for tomorrow and you've got fun on top of it because you're enjoying yourself on your trip. You're meeting new people. You're visiting. And it becomes self-supporting in the fact that you had so much fun on this trip. Let's do this again next year or the year after. And so you've got people who have repeated this trip over and over just for the joy of going down the road because they had so much fun and they have such good memories of it. I actually have met so many people that do it every year. I've dragged my yeah. kids on that route quite a few times. It's funny because now my son, he drives it by himself at 28 and now he loves it, even though he doesn't want to admit it. What would you focus on if you were going on a road trip tomorrow? If I was to leave tomorrow, I would probably go from here to Santa Monica. I've done part of that route before, but I didn't have the time to stop on parts of the route the way I wanted to and really explore. What would be your first big stop? Probably Pops at Arcadia because I have not been there. It wasn't a thing when I grew up in that area. So I would probably stop there. Definitely do the Riven Road on my way out through Miami because I want to see what the updates on the road because they're looking at how they can save that. The Riven Road is on the south side of the Miami district. It connected Afton, Narciss, and Miami. It connected them and it was the route and it's all back county roads now. But at the time, that was the route for Route 66. You'll see little markers on it here and there. But the Ribbon Road was only like eight foot wide. Instead of pouring two lanes of concrete, they poured one right down the middle. So just a ribbon of road down the middle of the road. And the rest of it, it was all dirt and mud track. There are places on that road that you can still see where the original concrete was. Like I said, it's a county road now, so it's got lots of gravel on it. It's been graded hundreds and hundreds of times. It's a part of my history. We always went that way. And then definitely going to stop in Toucan Carry, see some friends there that just recently moved there. There's fabulous hotels there. There's reasons you stop. 
And then there's stops you make just for the photo opportunities or who's there. Tucum Carry, Santa Fe, definitely. Last time I went through, we just breezed through Santa Fe. Definitely want to stop and see the, the architecture in Santa Fe because it's so much fun. So there's little things as a, as a mature woman adult traveler, you know, that affect me differently than nine-year-old me. 50-plus-year-old me wants to see the architecture, wants to see the history, wants to talk to the people and visit with them and hear their history about being in that area. So stops take on a different point of view as you run the route more and as you get older. I agree 100%. I feel like the stops that I make aren't necessarily something that other people would want to make. So Santa Fe is actually part of the old and original road. I personally haven't even been through there, so I can't wait to do that. What is special in Santa Fe? The architecture, the history. Santa Fe is, like you said, is one of the areas that were cut off from the original alignment when the roadway system. So there was so many layers of history that kind of time stopped in Santa Fe. And with the popularity of Route 66, it is able to revive some of those places that were close to being lost. The architecture, though, for the homes and you know, all the adobe in the area, it just makes it feel like it's in a different place in a different time. I'm all about the architecture as an adult, but I think even as a kid, I was interested in it. Now, you were traveling through Santa Fe. What's going to be another stop that you're going to make real soon? My next big trip, you know, unfortunately, I'm going to have to fly because of time. But I'm really excited about End of the Road, the Pier, Santa Monica, just going through that section of California. That's something I haven't done. Even though I've been to California multiple times, I'm really excited about that whole section. I can't blame you. I actually lived in Santa Monica and I had no idea at the time. I was, I think, 17, 18 years old when I lived in Santa Monica. And I didn't know that the pier that I went to all the time, I didn't know that the restaurant that I actually managed, which is now a Mel's Diner, I managed that restaurant. It was called The Penguin back, I don't want to give my age away, back 35 years ago-ish. It was the original Penguin that's up there, and I believe it's still there today. So that is something that I want to do as a Route 66 person that is just a Route 66 junkie. I can't wait to go back. I always go back there just to visit and see people and visit old places. But now I can't wait looking at it through the Route 66 goggles. That's going to be a lot of fun for me. Well, and I think you're right. It does change your point of view when you look at it as a Route 66 roadie historian. And I think it's true with a lot of things as we age. We appreciate things more. We value them more. We see them through those rose-colored glasses of nostalgia. They just take on a whole life of their own and they grow in our memories and they grow in our heart. So are they rose-colored glasses of nostalgia or are they bifocals? During the pandemic, obviously everybody saw a decline, but do you think that had any negative impact on Route 66 and the momentum that it was building at the time? I think it did. In 2019, we were looking at Route 66 being declared a national trail. That didn't happen. It still has not happened. There's motions on the floor. Both the Congress and the Senate have bills out there creating a national trail on Route 66. But those were tabled and they haven't gone through yet. And here we are looking at it four years later. We saw a huge decline in tourism. With the pandemic, international tourism was non-existent. Something that we saw as a side effect of the pandemic is so many institutions that are on Route 66, well, across the United States, in fact, who depend on volunteers to keep the doors open. You saw those volunteers no longer volunteering, and many of them did not come back after the pandemic. All of these places that are dependent of being open because of a volunteer staff member are limited hours, and it's taken a huge toll on the number of travelers that get to enjoy the places. Our Route 66 Visitor Center here in Baxter Springs, which I manage that as well as the museum. If I don't have a volunteer staff up there, 
during this tourist season, which is May through November, I'm closed. So people drive by, they take a picture and they keep on going. Well, they did not get the experience they wanted. It affects tourism in the local market area from a consumer standpoint as well. If that person keeps on traveling down the road because we weren't open, they did not stop and they didn't grab a cup of coffee. They didn't grab lunch. So lack of volunteers and these places being open is affecting the financial aspects of these tourist locations. So the pandemic had an impact on travel, but did it have some benefits too? Well, a lot of it was negative, impactful. But what I saw from my tourism experience with our guests that were coming in is the pandemic created a legion of work from home, remote workers, remote schooling. People didn't have to be in one place anymore. They could be on the road. So you saw this huge market uptick in the sales of RVs and travel trailers and campers and kayaks and bicycles because people said, well, you know what? If I can't be around people, I can travel. I can be in my car and see this and see that and be at these state parks. And the kids can go too because they don't have to be in school. They are remote learning. So as long as they had an internet feed, they could be on the road and they could be experiencing. So you saw these young 20-somethings and these young families that normally can't afford to travel or have the time off to travel. They were traveling. They were on the road. It became that family car trip from when we were kids and before. That family car trip became a thing that was happening again. It wasn't the same numbers, but it was a different set of numbers. That was kind of exciting to see that reversal of let's hurry, hurry. It was let's take time, let's see family, let's be family. And so from my standpoint, that was one of the things that we could take away from COVID. Not only did it slow things down. But it really opened up the opportunity for people to be able to discover new things. I actually had an RV at the time and I did travel more. I stayed at RV parks and I know RV sales went through the roof because like you said, it was bringing back family travel. I love looking at it that way. Route 66 is turning 100 years old. Do you feel like this is going to have an impact on travel? Absolutely. Route 66, even though it is not a national trail, it has been passed into law to create a centennial celebration. In 2026, Route 66 will be 100 years old. It's very iconic already, but give it a, a centurion birthday, that's fantastic. And so you have huge travel groups already planning block travel times to celebrate Route 66 to be a part of that iconic celebration. You see tourism up and down the route planning ahead. I'm part of a group that's looking, what can we do locally? What can we do in our little tri-state corridor? And coming up with ideas to help travelers bring home more of a celebration as they come through on Route 66 to extend that celebration. So do you guys have anything specific that you guys want to do for the celebration that's coming up? We've got lots of ideas. Nothing set in stone yet. I do know that we're looking at creating a travel guide that lets people know what's in the area, maybe a travel guide with a scavenger hunt in it, having a travel guide for everybody coming through that they can see what is in our little tri-state corridor. Tri-state corridor stems back to the lead and zinc mining era of Missouri, Kansas, and Oklahoma, northeast Oklahoma, southeast Kansas, southwest Missouri. And we're tied very closely together because of that lead and zinc mining era. It was known as the Tri-State Mining District. So we're the Tri-State Route 66 corridor with that same sense of community that we share with each other. Planning ahead and looking what we can do to promote each other, that is our goal at this point. So does the museum have a website that people can go and look at? That website is baxterspringsmuseum.org. Mary, thank you so much for being here and for filling our brains with Route 66 knowledge. Every time I talk to you, we spend so much time just chatting and <laughs> visiting, and I'm always pulling information from you. I can't wait to have you back. Thank you, guys. I hope to see you next time on Route 66 Travels.